In North Korea's capital, large crowds gathered to celebrate the one-year anniversary of Kim Jong-un's ascendancy to power. The pageantry and celebrations come as the Pyongyang regime warns they've put in the coordinates for a missile launch in their warheads, promising to create, quote, a sea of flames, end quote, against its enemies. Andrea Mitchell is in Seoul, South Korea, where she's awaiting the arrival of Secretary of State John Kerry. Andrea, thanks for joining us. I want to get right to it. How imminent is this launch? We keep hearing that it's going to happen. They've put the codes in. They've, they've, they've moved the, the missile launcher into right. place. Where are we? Well, a lot of this is probably for show. Uh, most likely it would happen in daylight. As you can see, it's nighttime here in Korea. But... Uh, look, we don't know. And that is one of the most troubling things. There was an intelligence hearing, an assessment on the Hill today on the House side, and Jim Clapper and John Brennan were both testifying. And General Clapper, who is the director of national intelligence, said to their best judgment, he, Kim Jong-un, is trying to consolidate his power one year in to his uh, stepping up to power and becoming leader of the Communist Party, as well as the other titles that he had already assumed. But they think he's trying to show off to a domestic and an external audience trying to consolidate power, showing the world that he has these missiles, but they don't know what his intent is. Is this just a replay of what his father and grandfather did, or is this a different kind of leader because he is so young, so inexperienced, and will he cross the line or provoke some sort of reaction, some sort of mistake with all of these hundreds of thousands of soldiers lined up along the border facing off against each other? And that is another big concern. You know, Andrew, we've heard these bellicose threats from the north. This is a sea of fire that they're going to rain down, these sorts of things. How right. do we differentiate? No one knows this better than you. How do we differentiate between what you're talking about, political positioning, and the real possibility that this time North Korea means business? Well, first of all, U.S. intelligence is not very good on this subject. This is the most opaque, hermetically sealed society. So that is a problem. We believe that this missile that has now been positioned on the East Coast, it does not have a warhead on it. We don't think he yet has the nuclear warheads that are miniaturized enough. This is a missile that could have a range of 2,180 miles, but he doesn't have long-range missiles. This is an intermediate-range missile. So. Uh, this could target certainly Japan or Guam. We think it is aimed at uh, dropping in the sea, and from what we're hearing from the Pentagon, is that they would shoot it down if it is headed towards Guam, if it's headed towards Japan, if it is fired, but not if it's going to drop in the ocean. So that is the balance of uh, response that the U.S. has so far weighed. Now, Andrea, while, uh, while you were talking, we showed some of these dog training videos they've been sending out, these viral videos they're sending out. Is this, again, is this show? Is this uh, something more? Or maybe we just simply do not know and, and caution is the, the watchword? Well, caution and prevention and having the Aegis destroyers with missile defense and having the additional missile defense now pre-positioned in Guam, showing the B-2s, showing the F-22s. Look, this is a real, a real danger. There's no question about it. If he doesn't have it now, as Chuck Hagel, the defense secretary, said today, he'll have it soon. So the regime is dangerous. The only real option so far, and this is something that, interestingly that the foreign minister Lavrov of Russia said as well in meeting with John Kerry yesterday in London at a summit. A GA summit. Uh, they need to make sure that Russia does something about th that, uh, rather, China does something about this, and even the Russians are on board. So, China is the next step. All of the leaders gathered in London with Kerry, and he just left today from London heading here, is that China has to do more than criticize North Korea rhetorically. They have to start cutting off money. They have to start pressuring. They have to pick up that phone and say to the regime, say to the generals or whomever they talk to, this new leader of China has to assert himself against North Korea. And that is the message that John Kerry is going to be bringing to Beijing in two days. Andrew Mitchell, I can do my math. I know it's past midnight there. Thanks for burning the midnight oil. I know you'll be back in the show later. Thank you. Absolutely.